I'm trying to keep us all on time, and you can always catch uh, Alex in the, uh, in the hallways. Uh, our next speaker is also uh, one of the directors uh, of Citrus. Uh, he's at the Santa Cruz, he's the leader of the uh, Santa Cruz uh, Citrus effort. It's Pat Manti. Uh, we'll talk about uh, biological telemonitoring, uh, and again, uh, 10 minutes, and we'll keep everyone on schedule. Thank you. Yeah, I'm the uh, token representative from Santa Cruz as far as the speakers are concerned, although I notice all of the Citrus staff from Santa Cruz is here in force. Uh, I, I think I'm really the fill-in behind uh, a speaker they really wanted, which was Michael Mateus, to talk about some of the work. We have a strong program in gaming. And the idea of using some of the gaming and simulation and looking at the, at the responses to uh, pandemics or other, other crises was of interest. But he's out of the country, so I had to fill in. And I started looking through my faculty colleagues, and a number of us have in the past worked with, in collaboration with medical researchers. But the only active one I could find was one of my the statistics colleagues who was doing work using electronic medical record data on treatment of critically ill newborns and looking at patterns of treatment. So what I looked at was what I had close at home that I thought was of interest to, it might be of interest to this audience because basically I'm here to advertise for potential collaborations between my faculty and the medical faculty that are here. Uh, most of my lines have been taken because things that we do have a lot of overlap with things you've already heard about, so I could be even briefer than 10 minutes. Uh, the project that I have to talk about that I thought I would mention to you is one we call carnivores, which has got just an, an acronym. I won't go through the reasoning behind the name, but but we, we got interested in trying to understand a little bit about the behavior of the mountain lions in the campus of Santa Cruz. Uh, we were then told by the lawyers not to do that because the mountain lions with a collar that we put on them, who would, when they attacked and ate a student, they would be holding us responsible. So the coyotes didn't seem to be as big a threat, so we instrumented coyotes. But now we've got a biologist who's willing to take responsibility for the mountain lions, so we're back into the mountain lion business by, by uh, indirection. So we've been interested in building a collar that we could put on a critter. And these critters aren't very receptive to having their batteries changed. So we have a challenge with the, with the power. And we also have a challenge with not knowing where they go. You know, the world would be a lot easier in sensor network as if everything was covered by a, a uniform wireless mesh. But unfortunately, we don't have the resources and the wherewithal, nor do we know where the coyotes actually go. And it turns out the two colleagues over here on my right are, are, are biologists working with us, and they were the ones who we're most interested in the problem. Where do the coyotes, what is their pattern of social behavior? Where do they go? What is their territory? How do they interact, et cetera? So this is a team of uh, the real workers up there on the top, in this case, are the graduate students, the first three. And then Katya and I are faculty working with them. And these are faculty from biology. And so we've been, the other piece of it is then building networking environments in which we accept that disruption will take place, that we're going to get data some of the time, but not all the time. And we can't count on when we'll get data. We put a few towers out. I'll show you quickly in the next chart. We put a few towers out as the idea of stations and connect those together continuously using 802.11 or something point to point 802.11. But then in between that, the coyotes may get close to it or may not. And as we find out their territory, and each of these collars has a GPS on it, accelerometers, microphone. We had a camera. We're trying to figure out how big of a payload that coyote can carry. And right now, the the surrogate for most of the early work on the coyote has been a dog because the dogs are a lot more uh, agreeable. Although some people have, we have found a couple of pet coyotes that we've been able to use in, the, in a test on a treadmill to get acceleration data and other. So one of the pieces we found was there's a notion that coyotes are, at least some of them are social animals and pack animals and some aren't. Uh, so we've worked on the idea of, of capturing data on one coyote that if it shows up near the network, it dumps its data. But if we send out the word that we're looking for coyote B who never shows up, coyote A will look for coyote B or essentially take the data from one to another. So we use this mule, the coyote being the mule of data for someone else. So we're, we're uh, working on that scheme. And in fact, one of the, Jay Boyce, who was on that previous talk, got a best paper award recently in a networking conference for this disruptive networking technology that goes with this. So. This is a quick picture to say we, we're building some real hardware. Uh, we're also looking at the things that go on at Berkeley and others. And we don't have a sensor lab at the level that this one. But we're using radios we can get, accelerometers, uh, uh, inertial guidance uh, would be nice if I had a whole inertial guidance system I could put on this or a platform. This, this platform is pretty small, and our power is pretty limited. But we're experimenting with how small we can make it. And I think we're a, a half step of technology behind most of what we see our colleagues at Berkeley working with. But we have been making this system on a fairly small budget, uh, looking like it'll show promise in getting the data from the coyotes. It's just about to be deployed on, 
on a few real critters. We track some of them through some other means. You have to catch them and put something on them and then find out where they go. So we've got some tracking on them now. And yeah, we're getting real data, although I have to confess, if you look in the background, we, we, truth in advertising, this is, this is the dog on the accelerometer, not the uh, on, accelerometer data from a dog, not from the coyote. We don't have any of that yet, but I noticed in one of the earlier talks, uh, real data is messy. Uh, I'm a signal processing background, signal and image processing, so I like getting a hold of real data. But it is messy, and figuring out what's really going on is the, as you see this 3D accelerometer data of a coyote running, uh, galloping along, is a, is a pretty interesting thing. Even a dog on a treadmill is somewhat interesting. So that's a quick picture. Let me say that then I started looking at what else I could do in my two minutes left, I think is saying about some other things I could advertise in Santa Cruz. And certainly, uh, as I say, John Canney's talk on what he, what he had looked at an overlap of, I think we should get together and find out what, uh, how the coyotes differ from the critters John's monitoring, but, uh, but we've, we've dreamed of uh, connecting up humans someday to some of this. The other things that I found at Santa Cruz in this area, uh, that people responded with interest, although none of them came, so I guess that can measure exactly the interest is in inversely proportional to distance, I suppose. Uh, there were, there's certainly interest in things related to signal processing and imaging in the general area related to uh, patient monitoring, to uh, outside uh, activity monitoring. Uh, Rujan has worked on elder care. I'm very interested in see some of my students have been brainstorming about how we could monitor an activity of an elderly person in a home that uh, is at home. Having just had that experience with uh, my mother, I know how much of a challenge it is to know whether mom's all right without intruding on her. And uh, all sorts of ideas will be thought out before we solve that problem well. Others, uh, I saw one, uh, Rama Kella is doing work on something that relates to something very much that Stuart talked about. He'd, he had some earlier work, I believe, with UC San Francisco on some things of brain injury, and they were looking at how they could assimilate the massive amount of data that can be gathered by somebody in intensive care and help the physician have Ram likes to use the word a, 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 tele, a cockpit, but essentially uh, some aggregated data that gives alerts to what you're really looking at uh, rather than being overwhelmed by the data that we saw. And I thought Stuart's pictures were about as pretty as I've seen of describing the complexity of some of that. So, and then the entire area of electronic medical records is fascinating to all of us who have backgrounds in, in IT and databases and record management and so forth. And, and then from that, the kinds of information one can extract by data mining, uh, by uh, statistical analyses, and so forth. So that's my quick advertisement. A couple of my colleagues gave me a chart. Yi Zhang had been doing some work at the University of Pittsburgh when she was a student at Carnegie Mellon before she joined our faculty, looking at how she could mine the data of a, of a doctor diagnosing and prescribing and seeing what patterns emerge from this data and what kind of dosages were used for what kind of, uh, uh, by different situations. Uh, Rom's work, as he said uh, earlier, working with some people at UCSF, uh, looking at this ICU focused on the brain injury, but it's very akin to what Stuart was talking about. Kevin Ross is a young faculty member in, our, in, uh, in information technology management that had been looking at allocation of, of essentially this outsourcing of or tw uh, availability 24 by 7 of uh, radiology and others. How do you move the files around among those who are available? How do you manage the workflow? So this, I saw this as basically the workflow management in that arena. So those are some of the quick pictures that I would view here just as, a, as an advertisement to say uh, Santa Cruz is interested in a lot of the same things you've heard today, and uh, I'm the single speaker in that front. But we'd, I certainly would delight in having uh, opportunities to collaborate with people in the medical field. A uh, trip to Sacramento is not all that difficult, especially when it's en route to Tahoe. Uh, I think we have, uh, you know, this isn't really that far out of our path. So. Uh, I, we're, we're an alternative uh, source for, uh, for partnership besides the ones from uh, the nearby at Davis and a little further down the road to Berkeley. With that, I'll stop and uh, let you move on to the program here. Thank you.